in biology and more specifically in the field of genetics, there are three terms that are constantly being used by scientists and sometimes these words are used interchangeably and that's exactly why they create a sense of confusion, especially to those who are beginning their study of genetics. So what exactly are these three words? So we have something called a locus, we have something called a gene and something called an allele. And before we discuss what the difference is between these three different words and how they're related to one another, let's recall what a chromosome is. So inside the nuclei of cells of different types of organisms, we have DNA molecules. Now, the problem is if we take any single DNA molecule and we stretch it out like so, it will actually be quite long. So let's suppose that this is the nucleus of our cell and this is the actual DNA molecule. So notice it's much longer than the size of the nucleus itself. So we can't actually fit the DNA in the way that we have it now into the nucleus of cells. For example, in humans, if we take a human DNA and we stretch it out, it's going to be somewhere between five and six feet in length. And that's clearly too large to fit it into a tiny, tiny microscopic nucleus of any of our somatic cells. So the way that organisms fit this, uh, solve this problem is by creating something called the chromosome. So they take these special proteins and they, uh, they take the DNA and they wrap the DNA around the proteins many, many, many times. So they create coils and then super coils and then solenoids and more coils and eventually they form this extremely condensed and dense version of the DNA we call a chromosome. So if this is our protein and this is our DNA, we basically take the DNA and we wrap the DNA around the protein many, 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 many times. Of course, it's more complicated than this, but you get the point. And once we wrap it around, it's now much smaller than before. And now we can fit it easily into the nucleus of our cell. So that is what a chromosome is. It's this entire structure that contains the DNA as well as the proteins that hold that dense structure together. So the chromosomes are basically the DNA along with the proteins that are found within the nucleus of our cells and the cells of other organisms. Now, what's the special feature? What's the special thing about DNA? Well, DNA basically contains the code that the cells use to create proteins and proteins are important in forming different organelles within the cell as well as uh, helping the cell carry out different types of cellular processes. Now, what about on the macroscopic level? Why are proteins important? Well, because proteins are used to express the different types of traits and characteristics that are found within that given organism. So if we're talking about humans, the height of humans is one trait, the eye color is another trait, the hair color is a third trait, and so forth. So in this lecture, we're going to focus on pea plants and we can talk about many different types of traits for pea plants. We have basically a trait for a height, we have a trait for a seed color, for the pod color, so the pods are basically the structures in which the seeds are found in. We have seed shape, we have pod shape, we also have the seed coat color. Now within the DNA, the DNA actually consists of these sequences of nucleotides. Now, some of these sequences do not actually code for any protein, but those sequences of nucleotides that do contain the information, that do code for a special type of protein that, once built, is used to help us express the traits, those special segments of DNA are known as genes. So a gene is a special segment of the DNA, the sequence of nucleotides, that codes for a protein that is used to help us express those traits and those characteristics that are found on that individual, on that organism. Now, and uh, along the chromosome, so this is a single chromosome, along the chromosome we can have thousands of different types of genes. And in this particular diagram, we have only six genes. So we have a red gene, 
uh, we have a green gene, we have our blue gene, the light green gene, the dark purple, and the light purple gene. And each one of these genes basically codes for its own protein that is used to express some type of trait. So for example, this gene can code for a tall plant. And so this is the height gene. It codes for a protein that is used to express the height of that particular plant. Now, in the same exact way that when I tell somebody my address, they know exactly where I live and where to find me, when I tell somebody the locus of any given gene, the locus basically refers to where that gene is found along that DNA, along that chromosome. So a locus refers to the location on that chromosome for that specific gene that codes for some specific trait. So a locus is not the same thing as a gene. So a locus basically tells us the address of that given gene. So on the following chromosome, we have many different loci. And each one of these loci basically tells us where that gene is actually found. So we have locus number one that contains a gene that codes for a protein that expresses the height of that plant. The second locus is basically the locus that contains the gene that codes for a different trait. For example, the seed color. Then we have the pod color and so forth. And along the chromosome, we have many, many of these genes. Here we have six genes, but normally we have thousands of these different types of genes. Now, let's recall an important piece of information about diploid organisms. So, in any diploid organism, in any two-end organism, we have every single chromosome comes in a pair. So basically, in diploid organisms, chromosomes always come in pairs. And that's exactly why I have a second chromosome on the board. So in humans, even though we have 46 individual chromosomes, we actually have 23 pairs of chromosomes. And each pair of chromosomes is called a homologous pair. And we'll see what that means in just a moment. So in any homologous pair, one chromosome came from the female gamete and the other chromosome came from the male gamete. So if we look at the following diagram, let's suppose we have a male gamete, the sperm cell, we have one chromosome, we have a female gamete, let's say that's the egg, and they combine, and once they combine, they form the zygote, and now we have n number of chromosomes, n number of chromosomes, and once we form the zygote, we have 2n number of chromosomes, so we have a homologous pair. Now, in humans, this would be 23 individual chromosomes plus 23 individual chromosomes. They combine to form 23 homologous pair, or 46 individual chromosomes would be found in a single human zygote. Now, because we're talking about pea plants, this would be seven chromosomes, and seven chromosomes would give us 14 total chromosomes, or seven homologous pairs. Now, what's the big deal about a homologous pair? Why do we have this pairing of our chromosomes in the first place? So, what are the criteria for homologous chromosomes. So homologous chromosomes satisfy two things. First of all, they have similar size, they have similar structure and similar shape. And second of all, they have genes that code for similar proteins that express the same exact trait. So number two is the important criterion for homologous chromosomes. So they carry genetic information, so they carry the genes that have the same type of information that code for those same types of proteins that help us express some given trait. So if we, for example, take one chromosome and that chromosome contains, let's say, the seed color, then its homologous chromosome will also contain a corresponding gene that creates proteins that expresses the seed color. So if we take a look at the following diagram, if this is, let's say, a chromosome number one, and this is its homologous chromosome, what that means is this will contain a gene in this locus that will code for a height, and this homologous 
chromosome will also contain a similar gene that will also code for a protein that will help us express our height. And these two genes, with respect to one another, these two homologous genes are known as alleles or alleles. So basically, such a pair of genes, such a pair of genes found on homologous chromosomes that code for polypeptides, that express the same physical trait, in this case it's the height, in this case it's the seed color, the pod color, the seed shape, and so forth, these are known as alleles. So alleles are basically two genes that are located on homologous chromosomes that code for a similar polypeptide, a similar protein that gives us or helps us express that same type of trait. So in this particular homologous pair, we have one, two, three, four genes on this chromosome, one, two, three, four genes on this chromosome. So we have a total of eight genes, but we have a total of four alleles. This is one allele pair, a second allele pair, we have a third allele pair, and a fourth allele pair. So let's say that this codes for some type of trait, let's suppose it's the height, and this also must code for that same type of trait for the height. But that doesn't mean that these must code for the same exact type of protein. The proteins can actually differ. In fact, this gene can code for a tall plant, but this gene can code for a short plant. And in that particular case, because the tall trait is dominant over the short trait, this will actually express the trait, but this will not be uh, expressed because by the law of dominance, we have a dominant trait will basically inhibit the expression of that recessive trait. So also notice that because homologous chromosomes have similar size, shape, and structure, each allele pair are found as, at similar locations along the chromosome that is at a similar locus. So if gene number one for height is found on the top at this locus, then on the homologous chromosome, the locus will also be found in that location on the top of that chromosome. That's exactly what we have here. We have essentially a perfect pairing of these alleles. Now, as I mentioned earlier, and this is an important point, even though each allele pair contains similar genes, the genes that code for similar traits, the genes do not have to code for identical traits. So for example, if we're talking about humans, and let's say this allele or this gene codes for the color blue of our eyes, and this codes for some other color, then they will not be the same exact gene. This could be blue, this could be green, or this could be blue, this could be brown, and so forth. So what that means is, these allele pairs do not have to code for that same identical type of protein. The proteins can be different, but those two proteins will be involved with expressing that same type of trait. So this is the difference between a locus, a gene, and an allele. So a locus is basically the address point of that gene. It tells us where that gene is located along that particular chromosome. And an allele basically comes in pairs because in diploid organisms, we have these homologous chromosomes. We have two genes that each come from both parents that code for some given trait. So this gene might, came, might have come from, let's say, the male parent, but this gene came from the female parent when we underwent the process of fertilization, when we actually produced that zygote.